Good morning. Good Announcements today. Uh, All Saints Sunday will be November 7th, so please add the names of your saints to our 2021 list. Uh, we're also continuing to share the pictures that have been sent in previous years. You may call, text, or email names or email pictures to Beth Lackey. The deadline to send any new pictures is Monday, November 1st, and her contact information is in the bulletin. Order forms for poinsettia orders for Advent and Christmas, uh, they're on the last page of the bulletin. Additional forms on the Narthex bulletin board, and the deadline to place those orders is after worship on Sunday, November 14th. And those flowers can be taken home after the Christmas Eve service. If you would like a COVID test to take at home, please see Kathy Baldner, or there is some in the Narthex, and she will be at the table before Sunday worship service or until no more tests are available. Is that correct? All right. And then the LCW Day of Sharing. Due to COVID-19, the Laudenville Church Women will be partnering with Helping Hands to provide food gift certificates to Stakes IGA in Laudenville for needy families who are residents of the Laudenville Perrysville School District. Registration will be open October 20th through November 20th, and there is a link in your bulletin to register online for that, or you can call in by phone. Limit of one gift certificate per household. And then as always, we can always use help for indoor worship, lay readers, acolytes, ushers, and with the worship video. And also for helping those in need for the homeless, uh, such as collections or monetary donations. And then there's always food pantry needs for Lonville Food Pantry and Lakeville Food Pantry. Yes. There's a brief council meeting downstairs after worship. Brief council meeting downstairs after worship. All right. We continue with our prelude.
person and online if you are joining with us on Facebook Live and on FM Radio. This is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. As you can see, I have an extra assisting minister this morning. This is Miss Elizabeth. Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, thank you to Vaughn Pooster who covered for me last Sunday. Really appreciated that. And I understand the trunk or treat went really, really well last night. So um, thank you to everyone who helped with that. Um, just please take note there are deadlines coming up, um, and so we need to hold to those as best as we can. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, all contact information is in there as far as uh, who to contact for various things. One piece of excitement that happened in my life is Sunday I was with you two weeks ago. I told you I was on my way to West Virginia. Um, for the installation service of my successor in Vienna, uh, Reverend Tom Dar, and uh, all of you who said safe travels on the way back, you have no idea how true that was. <laughs> um, I hit a deer on I-77 on the way back, um, about eight miles north of uh, Marietta, Ohio. It was either hit the car in the left lane or hit a deer. And so my uh, SUV uh, is being repaired as we speak. Uh, thankfully, nobody was injured other than the deer, but those of you, how many people have hit a deer in this room? Yeah, you know the damage they can do. <laughs> so, um, so please uh, take the heat of warning. It's uh, deer season out there, so, um, but I'm okay otherwise. So, with that, just one other reminder, next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. And besides Halloween, do anyone remember that? Wear your red to church. Yeah. Make sure you wear red to church for Reformation Sunday. Um, and the kids are going to be in for a treat because there's a little surprise for them next week also, so in the service. So just to let you know that. With that, welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I invite you to stand as we begin with a confession of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life and whose presence is sure and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn found in the blue hymnals, hymn 718. Here in this place, we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs>
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together a great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Be the New Testament reading comes from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. of the Holy Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Manly sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus stood and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, for he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, may be seated. The children may come forward. Oh, Mr. Matt, you're going to come up here too. <laughs> This is a two-parent job this morning. <laughs> Come here. Come over here, sir. 
Good morning, all. How are you? Good. Did you guys have a great week? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me one thing you did this week? Trunk or treat? Trunk or treat? You had a soccer game? Did you guys win or lose? You won? What, what position do you play? Okay, you like them all? How about you, Reese? Your dad went hunting? Okay. Maybe your dad could take care of that deer that hit my car. <laughs> what do you think of that? Actually, I think I already took care of that deer. That deer's already done. Elizabeth, what did you do this week? She's like, I'm getting into everything. <laughs> everything. So Elizabeth's new word this week is she's been learning these little vocabulary words that they have words on cards, and she's like learning how to, to talk. You know how you guys all like to talk? So her favorite word right now is quiet, because she likes to go around and she does this to us. Shh. Can you guys do that with me? Shh. Elizabeth, can you do that? Should we be quiet? No. No. <laughs> She's like, all these people are staring at me. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> and so anytime, even when we're watching TV at home, she's like, shh. And then she tries to go over to the remote, and she tries to like silence the remote so we can't. I think it's because I don't have the right program that she likes on, which I don't know which show she likes now, other than we watched Frozen like 100 times already. So... <laughs> Um, but today in our gospel reading, did you guys pick up on the gospel reading that poor blind Bartimaeus, yeah. what, what happened to him? He was blind and then Jesus healed him. But what happened before Jesus healed him? What did the people um, do to him? He, they were telling him to be quiet, but he did, instead of being quiet, he just kept standing up and talking to Jesus. He was confident, he had faith. And he was like, I'm not going to listen to those people who are telling me, be quiet. You guys ever hear that once in a while? Has anyone ever told you to be quiet and you said, I'm going to talk anyway? <laughs> Raise your hands. Anyone in this room? Yeah? Sometimes about being quiet. Sometimes there's a time and place for us to be quiet, right, to hear God's voice. But then there's a time, like, when sometimes, like, we have to speak out, right? And we have to say what's, what's the truth. And blind Bartimaeus, he, he had faith in Jesus Christ, like faith that can move mountains. And like he was just like, son of David, have mercy on me, right? Have compassion on me. And then Jesus says, what do you want me to do? And he says, let me see again. And then what happens? He is able to see. And in the process of that, it is, she, right. Jesus healed him, and his faith in Jesus healed him. And so we hold on to that for ourselves as well, right? Because sometimes we get, we'll get told to be quiet and stuff, and we have faith, right? No, thing, no voices out there that tell us to be quiet about our faith are going to overcome. They can't, nobody can take your faith away from you. Did you know that? Yeah. Nobody. Because it's a gift from God and Jesus Christ. And so whether you're Elizabeth's age, a baby, or really old, nobody can take that from you. And so um, hold, be confident like Bartimaeus. Hold fast to that faith. And um, don't let people try to silence that, that voice of faith, right? That's in our hearts and minds. So with that, let us pray. Good and gracious God in Jesus Christ, we give thanks for the faith you give us by the power of your Holy Spirit to trust and believe in your promise of God's unconditional love and forgiveness. Thank you for the faith you give these kids and to their families who nurture them in the faith and for this church community who nurtures them in the faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so... We ask that you pour your blessing upon these kids, strengthen them in their faith in you. When they get confronted with those voices that say, be quiet, help them to speak even louder and more boldly and courageously their faith of confession to you that they love and that they serve you. 
be with these kids, be with them as they go forth this week, keep them safe, be with all their families, their friends, their teachers, and all who love and care for them. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you all. I swear, Elizabeth's never this quiet. I think she's just mesmerized <laughs> by watching everyone this morning. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning I'd like to open our sermon with a story that comes from a um, resource, A Time to Laugh, and the author is anonymous, so I don't know who wrote this, but I thought it was really good and something for us to think about as we open our service this morning and this week. I used to think of God as my observer, my judge, keeping track of all the wrong things I did, so as to know whether I merited heaven or hell when I die. He was out there, sort of like a president. I recognized his picture when I saw it, but I really didn't know him. But later on, when I met Christ, it seemed as though life were rather like a bike. But it was a tandem bike. And I noticed that Christ was in the back helping me to pedal. I don't know just when it was he suggested we change places, but life has not been the same since I took the back seat to Jesus, my Lord. Christ makes life exciting. When I had control, I thought he knew the way, but it was rather boring and predictable. It was the shortest distance between two points. But when Christ took the lead, he knew all the delightful long cuts up the mountains, through the rocky places, and at breakneck speeds, it was all I could do to hold on. And even though I felt like madness, he said, pedal. I was worried and anxious and asked, where are you taking me? He laughed and didn't answer. And I started to learn to trust. I forgot about my boring life and entered the adventure. And when I would say, I'm scared, he leaned back and grabbed my hand. He took me to people with gifts that I needed, gifts of healing, acceptance, and joy, they gave me their gifts and to take on my journey and our journey together, my Lord's and mine, and we were off again. He said, give the gifts away, their extra baggage, too much weight. And so I did to the people we met, and I found that in giving, I received, and still our burden was light. I did not trust him at first, in control of my life. I thought he wrecked it, but he knows bike secrets, knows how to make it bend to take sharp corners, jump to clear high rocks, fly to short and scary passages, and I'm learning to shut up and pedal in the strangest places. And I'm beginning to enjoy the view and the cool breeze on my face with my delightful constant companion, Jesus Christ. And when I'm sure I can't do it anymore, Jesus looks back to me, and he smiles, and he says, pedal. Amen to that, right? I open with that because this morning's reading from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, Specifically, the people's response to Bartimaeus invites us to think about how we, as followers of Jesus Christ, can be both inviters to the faith, but we also can be a stumbling block to the faith. The metaphor I like to use for this, this morning, we used to have a joke in our family, God bless my mother who's up in heaven right now, 
My mother could go through brake pads and rotors faster than a duck could swim down river. <laughs> and do you know how that's possible? Because in Pittsburgh, there are lots of steep hills. And God bless my mother. She would go down the hill, and she would have her brake and her foot on the brake of the gas all at the same time. We all know that does not work well, right? We would get like new brakes, like, and two months later, it was like, we're back at the shop for new brakes. Now, there were times when it was necessary, if you're at the top of the hill, right? If you're on a really steep hill, we experienced this in Pittsburgh and West Virginia. If you get to the top of the hill, there's a traffic light, right? You have to be able to still have your foot on the brake, right? But as soon as that green light goes, what do you got to do? Hit the gas, right? And hope you don't drift backwards and hit the person behind you. I like to call it that push and pull effect, in essence. And that's kind of what we see with these disciples and the crowds following this morning. We are with Jesus and his disciples on the way to Jerusalem. There, and we encounter blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus in the Greek is son of Timaeus. The name Timaeus means honorable. There is Bartimaeus, a blind beggar alongside the road. Was Bartimaeus physically blind? Was he spiritually blind? According to Mark's gospel, he was physically blind and he was poor. In those days, beggars who would sit alongside the road, they would sit down as I would right now and they would have whatever cloth that they owned. They would drape it across their laps and that was where the people would throw the money or any other material goods for the day and they would collect them. Now, I want us to hold that image in our minds for a minute this morning. Imagine yourself being Bartimaeus for a minute, blind, alone, alongside the road, vulnerable to the conditions outdoors, vulnerable to other people around you, or even creatures, right? No protection gear whatsoever and no way to protect yourself and with no standing in society. Can you all picture yourselves for a minute in that? How lonely that might be for Barnabas? Be pretty scary, right? Yet blind Barnabas, even in his physical blindness and poverty, the physical and social barriers do not stop Artemis from hearing and receiving the good news of Jesus Christ. He not only hears of Jesus, but he hears of Jesus in such a way that it moves him to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. We hear those same echoes in the Old Testament, Psalm 51, right? Have mercy upon me, O God. Right? It is a prayer of confession. That simple one sentence he says twice in his gospel reading is a prayer of confession. Bartimaeus confessing of his need for God, of needing Jesus Christ, of needing God's compassionate and steadfast love in his life, Barnabas is acknowledging his need for dependence upon God for this life, and he recognizes truly who Jesus is. Now, in the meantime, what do the people who are witnessing this do? The kids said it earlier. What did, what did, the, what did they say to Barnabas? They said, be quiet. They said, be quiet. Thank you. Did Barnabas listen? No. No. Shout that a little louder. No. No. Not a chance, right? 
But in essence, those people who are witnessing this, they were a stumbling block to the faith, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Rather than embracing this brother in Christ, they try to silence him, attempt to make him just shut up. The spiritual blindness of these disciples and the people gathered in Jericho doesn't stop God from being who God is and what God does in Jesus Christ. God works in spite of the crowd gathered who are becoming a stumbling block to the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. Bartimaeus may be physically blind and poor, but he is not spiritually blind. The stern warning from the people does not stop Bartimaeus from calling out to Jesus even louder over the voices who say, be quiet, stay away, and nobody wants to hear from you. The Holy Spirit instead stirs Bartimaeus to cry out once again a prayer, a confession, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus hears the confession of Bartimaeus and says, call him here. And suddenly, I always love this crowd. They go from, be quiet, shut up, stay away, don't do anything, to suddenly, oh, now come along. Anyone pick up on that, the irony of that? Take heart, get up, he's calling you. No, really? I hadn't noticed. <laughs> and the one tiny detail that gets lost in this gospel reading for today, Barnabas' response to the invitation. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Literally, think about it for a minute. The cloak of material security, Bartimaeus throws it away. Literally throws it, leaves it behind, doesn't even look back and says, Oh, let me go grab my stuff I got today. He strips himself of the material things, throws off his cloak and physically dispenses himself of material things to go and see this Jesus. And Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus responds, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus responds, go, your faith has made you well. How many times do we hear that in the New Testament? Right? The woman at the well... I can think of a new, numerous examples. Go, your faith has made you well. Barnabas takes seriously that commissioning he receives from Jesus. He regains his sight and he follows Jesus Christ. And Barnabas is made whole in so many different ways, healed, forgiven, loved by God, and loved by Jesus Christ. What we don't hear is what happens with the crowds after that, <laughs> right? What their response was. But what we see is that in spite of the crowd's best and very worst efforts, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ still abounds. Can I get an amen for that? And the Holy Spirit stirs this man to faith to leave everything behind and follow Jesus Christ. When I think about this in relationship to the church and the body of Christ, so often I hear the skepticism from people, the church would be great if it weren't for all the people. Have you heard that? Yeah? And I get that's a very negative view of the church. But at our very best, when we allow Christ to be at the center of everything we say and do, the Holy Spirit brings people to faith. 
to trust and believe in Jesus Christ. And what we need to do is get out of the way. <laughs> right? But when we are given opportunities as the body of Christ, even in the church community, then we use this opportunities to strengthen the faith of others and ourselves. Right? To build up the body. And invite others to believe. And then at the very worst, we treat faith like an artifact. <laughs> right? Hi, faith. It's really nice to see you. You're a great statue over here. <laughs> Maybe you've met people like that. When we forget who the church belongs to in the first place, and it's not us, it's not Pastor Emily's church, it's not, it's not even our church in here, right? We may say it's our church, but really it's God's church, it's Christ's church. When we make it about the ways we want to be in control, and not about God, then we turn people away from the faith of Jesus Christ. And some of them will never get a chance to see who Jesus is, or who God is, and what God and Jesus Christ is about. And it doesn't take much, right? If you think about it in community. It doesn't. It Community is a very fragile thing. It's more fragile than we realize. <laughs> the good news is that even in spite of us, at our very best and our very worst, in our physical and spiritual blindness, the gospel of Jesus Christ prevails. And the Holy Spirit continues to be at work in people's lives, bringing people to faith in Jesus Christ, and rather than us trying to push the gas and the brake pedals all at the same time, we do what Bartimaeus does. And we become Bartimaeus all over again. We confess with our hearts, lips, my, minds, and mouths, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And that indeed, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is good news indeed. Thanks be to God and all keep God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on God's holy word. The hymn of the day can be found in your bulletins. Hymn number 722, verses 1 and 2. O Christ, your heart compassionate, please stand. <laughs>
Holy Spirit, we boldly profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation responding, Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One, we give you thanks for a generous land that produces abundant harvests. Strengthen and protect all soils, from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands to patio planters to fertile valleys, and bless to all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O oh God. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders and nations who work to build up the common good. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all the nations that peace extends in every direction. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing One, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially Gwen... Gaylord, Charlie, Steve, Patty, Charlotte, Keith, Chase, Coralie, Ken, Irma, Kathy, Richard, Lenny, Sophie, Sharon and Steve, Susan, Veronica, Dwayne and Pat, Betty and Larry. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of wisdom, we pray for guidance as we discern where your Holy Spirit is guiding us. We remember, especially our call committee members, that your Holy Spirit be with them as they help search for a new pastor to shepherd and guide this faith community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Living One, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. We give especially thanks for Kari, Stanton, Don, Carolyn, Steve, Rebecca, and Darren. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth, and our life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. To share the peace of Christ with one another. Hey, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. collect the offering. Thank you to all of you for dropping off your offering in the donation box today, sending it electronically or mailing it in. Thank you to all of you who use your talents to extend the ministry by helping those who are in need. Let us pray together. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain down from the heavens. 
Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to take your communion cup. There is a double layer, so the first layer to pull back to get to the host, the bread, and then pull up on the second layer to open the grape juice. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened us to the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. At this time, I now invite you first to take your bread. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. Amen. And with the cup, this is the blood of Jesus Christ, which is shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Please join with me in your Lutheran Book of Worship, page 73, the post canticle. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, O oh life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. 
Amen. Receive God's blessing, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue in our blue hymnals, hymn 795. Hymn 795, O sing to the Lord. We will sing verses 1 and 2. <laughs> downstairs.